Okay, so this is the first video for global resource consumption and security for IB geography. So, the f so this part of the syllabus is global and regional slash continental progress towards poverty reduction, including the growth of the new global middle class. So here are the types of poverty firstly. So absolute poverty measures poverty in relation to the amount of money necessary to meet basic needs such as food, clothing and shelter. The concept of absolute poverty is not concerned with broader quality of life issues or with the overall level of inequality in society. And then we have income poverty and this is when a family's income fails to meet a federally established threshold that differs across countries. Typically it is measured with respect to families and not the individual and is adjusted for the number of persons in a family. And then there's relative poverty which is a, a type of poverty in relation to the economic status of other members in society. People are poor if they fall below prevailing standards of living in a given societal context. So it's basically if you're in poverty compared to those around you, it doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have access to basic needs but just that you are lower than the average person. Okay, and then extreme poverty is a global measure classifying those who fall below a minimally accepted income level. It is currently set to the possession of less than $1.90 a day. Okay, and then we have this. So we kind of have to know the global progress towards poverty production, reduction as a trend. Like you have to be aware of what the general trend is so from this um, graph we can see that from 1820 to 2015 there's clearly been a rise in the number of people not in extreme poverty um, and then for people living in extreme poverty there's kind of been a rise and then from kind of the 90s it began to fall and it will kind of move around but and then from about 2000 onwards it fell um so just know just be aware of this general trend and also be aware that this is for extreme poverty so um remember to distinguish so this is people who are earning less than one dollar ninety cents a day okay and then we have regional progress towards poverty production so this is kind of per continent or per region so okay so this diagram shows that okay for, we'll go through each um continent like just saying what's happened well this is also for extreme poverty okay so sub-saharan africa there's been a not any it has it doesn't look too drastic but there has overall been a fall um i mean it's kind of risen here but then it's generally it's fallen um, however, it hasn't fallen as drastically as other countries and it still remains quite high in the percentages, whereas country uh, regions such as East Asia and Pacific have fallen really drastically from like 80 to almost zero, like maybe 2%. And then South Asia has also fallen, however, it hasn't fallen as much. It doesn't, isn't as low as other countries, so it's still relatively high compared to these countries. Um, then we have Middle East, which has kind of fallen and fallen and actually risen um, in recent years. Europe and Central Asia has kind of risen, but overall it has fallen and it's quite low now. So, okay, so then we look at the world trend, which composed of all of these other regions, it has overall declined. Okay, also note that this is only to 2015, so it could have changed. Um, until now but I couldn't find a graph of that okay regional progress towards poverty reduction again so here we're just having like this chloropleth map which shows you know like obviously here 100% means that there's a 100% of individuals living below the international poverty line so as you can see they're kind of concentrated around Central Africa and then the kind of as you move up to maybe 50 40 percent it's also in central africa but also well i think that would be like 30 percent or 20 to 30 okay so it's mainly cent centralized around central africa and kind of 
um, Western Africa, Southern, okay, and then you go into 20 to 30, and that is still some of Africa, but also some of South Asia, so you have India, you have, oh my gosh, I don't remember my countries, bruh, okay, you have, um, Myanmar, you have Laos, and maybe, I think that's Haiti, but I'm not sure. Honestly, that's probably not Haiti, but okay. Anyway, okay, wait, I'll just check quickly. Okay, actually, it was Haiti. Okay, so Haiti, and then from tw 10 to 20, um, you kind of have more of Southeast Asia, more, you know, s still some of Africa. Um, maybe this part of South America, and then you have 5 to 10 percent kind of here, here. Oh my gosh, I can't tell the difference between this and that. Okay, well, this is definitely 5 to 10, so Indonesia. And then kind of 0 to 5% is the most, the majority of kind of Northern Asia, Europe, you, uh, North America, most of South America, and kind of Northern Africa. So just kind of be aware of the general trend of like um, the concentrations of low and high, um, extreme poverty. Okay. And here's a final one for regional progress towards poverty reduction. So globally, there are 70, no, 746 million people in extreme poverty. This is 2013, so it must have changed since then. So this is like, just be aware. But as you can see, the majority share of those in poverty, extreme poverty, are in India, Democratic Republic of Congo, Nigeria, China, Indonesia, Tanzania, Ethiopia, Madagascar, Mozambique, and then these are also quite large shares, but not as large as these big squares. So Africa and Asia do have a fair share, 383 million, 327 million. And these countries, North America, Europe, not countries, continents, here, North America, Europe, Oceania, and South America kind of still has quite a few, but obviously not as many as these these have you know the least amount well brazil actually has quite a few compared to like these ones in asia and these ones but also that's because brazil has a really big population okay now we're going to go on to the idea of the new global middle class so over recent years you should be aware that there's been a world growth in the middle class from Okay, so this is a graph from the OECD showing 2009 to 2030, so it's showing what are the trends. So this shows that overall there'll be a 1.8 to 4.9 billion growth from 2009 to 2030. And then, okay, so for each continent, let's see. I don't know why there's nothing for Oceania, but it's okay. Okay, so as you can see, the largest growth is in Asia, followed by Middle East slash Africa, followed by Latin America, and then North America and Europe have a fairly low and actually negative growth. Um, and this is probably because their economies aren't growing as fast as these countries. As uh, In here, we have a lot of developing countries like the BRICS, um, you know, just growing countries, and here the kind of more HICs kind of, you know, they're not growing fast. North America might actually, well, I don't know if it's growing negatively. Okay. And then we have another infographic. So at a global level, we are witnessing the most rapid expansion. Oh my gosh, we got an email. Of the middle class the world has ever seen. So at the end of 2016, there are about 3.2 billion people in the global middle class. On average, 160 million will join the middle class annually for the next five years. So very, very large growth. So another one, and by the way, this is from Brookings. Um, okay, so 80% of the next billion entrants into the middle class will be in Asia. By 2030, Asia could represent two-thirds of the global middle class population. So here, obviously, Asia has huge growth of the global middle class because these countries are just like growing economies. Okay, now we're going to look at the implications of a growing new middle class. So this is quite a lot of text, but... I'll kind of summarize it. So let's look at social first. So middle classes are believed to support democracy, but progressive, oh, and progressive but moderate political platforms. Strong middle classes can influence economic development through more active 
participation in the political process, expressing support for political programs and electoral platforms, in particular those that promote inclusive growth. So, I mean, this is also kind of political, but there's no political section, but social political. So it has, they tend to have, you know, they impact politics of countries. So in Asia and countries like this, this is what's happening. Okay, now diets of the middle class tend to involve more meat and dairy because, you know, rising incomes, growing. Therefore, any increase in this group will lead to an increase in overall consumption of these foods. The meat and dairy industry are amongst the biggest contributors to climate change through carbon and methane emissions. So there is kind of some danger here towards the environment. And it's kind of that thing where countries that are in the middle class are growing, they're consuming more kind of meat and dairy because they're growing incomes, growing kind of imports trade globalization and then when you get to kind of the higher class or higher income groups there's kind of more of, tends to be more awareness of the environmental impact and things so that there, there might be a downward trend in like consumption and there's more kind of health consciousness okay then we have environmental oh well this is kind of environmental too okay increased consumption con- Consumption coincides with increased use of resources and waste. The middle class generally have a higher ecological footprint than those classified as working class or and or in poverty. So again, it's this idea of more demand, more consumption, globalization, trade, all these things. Okay, then finally we have economics. So the middle class have more disposable income and therefore growth in middle class generally. What? Oh, okay. A growth in middle class generally coincides with a growth in consumption of goods such as electrical, mobile phones, and cars. For example, sales of cars and motorbikes have increased by 800% since 2009. So this, again, is linking to this idea of consumption, increased consumption. But here it's specifically for you know technology and electronics. Middle class expectations in emerging and developing countries are rising and evolving as their country's economic situations improve. Providing the quality public services that the middle class demands can be difficult for some governments lacking the economic funds. So, kind of, it poses a strain upon governments to provide enough welfare and government services for this growing population who kind of demand more. And this kind of links with this because people are are willing to express their opinions and participate in political processes okay finally a growing middle class enables a country to move away from export driven growth towards domestic consumption as more and more people in a country have the disposable income to buy luxury goods thus driving economic growth good examples of this are the growth of the domestic market in korea and in the 1980s and china in the 2000s so this idea where you are kind of becoming less reliant on um you know export as a source of income so people are allowed to spend at home and that raises the income of the economy even more and also just like generates or like it like fuels the growing new middle class even more 